As soon as the Gulf War ended, many asked, how many Iraqis died? Unfortunately, almost 30 years on, we still don't know. Mostly because the coalition's leaders didn't want us to. And no, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's an example of war propaganda and an impossible job. After the Vietnam War, a myth sprang up in the American right-wing community, and, among other institutions, the military, that the war wasn't lost on the battlefield, but at home. These people talked of a stab in the back by the civilians, and blamed the media for giving the wrong impression of what the war was like and talking too much about casualties. This really is just a bitter conspiracy theory, and not at all why the Vietnam War ended, but it's what many believed. As a result, there was a hesitancy among the Americans, who were, for all intents and purposes, in charge of the coalition in the Gulf War, to work out how many Iraqis died. Part of the reason for this, it was argued by John Heidenrich, a former military analyst at the American Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, was, quite simply, fear. Senior officials fear that any estimate they release will provide ammunition to Pentagon critics. A high estimate could bring charges of barbarism. A low estimate might bring accusations of a cover-up. And any estimate could evoke unwanted and unfair parallels between Desert Storm and the body count mentality of Vietnam. Senior officials, then, would rather not say anything at all. The media was kept under pretty tight wraps in the Gulf War, which meant that the coalition had the opportunity to let the public back home know almost everything they wanted them to know, and almost none of what they didn't. The policy arrived at, then, was to not report on the Iraqi human losses, but they would report on material ones. To this end, the coalition's commander, General Schwarzkopf, would comfortably tell reporters that from midday on January the 29th, 1991, to 3 a.m. on January the 30th, the coalition had destroyed 178 trucks, 55 artillery pieces, and 52 tanks. He was far less comfortable talking about the people in those vehicles. He had a special enmity for CNN reporter Peter Arnett, because Arnett would report on the civilian casualties. In fact, when reporters did ask Schwarzkopf for just how many Iraqis he thought had died in the war, he skirted around the issue and said, I would probably say that no, there will never be an exact count. And indeed, nobody did count. Also, nobody really could. But people wanted to know. One of the first investigations into the number of Iraqi dead was not long after the war in 1991 when the DIA was essentially forced by a Freedom of Information request to do so. They said that there wasn't enough information to know, but they guessed perhaps 100,000 combat deaths, give or take 50,000. Later, they would announce that they didn't believe their own report was accurate. But the number stuck and got into popular knowledge, even though nobody actually knows whether or not it's true. In 1992, the 100,000 figure was challenged by Lieutenant General Horner, who was in charge of the air campaign, when he said that the Iraqis had between 10 to 30,000 casualties. Yet, in two books on the war, which came out in the following few years, very high estimates were given. Ramsey Clark's book, US War Crimes in the Gulf, which isn't very reliable, said perhaps up to 200,000 Iraqis were killed in the six weeks of war, while Douglas Kellner's The Persian Gulf TV War, which isn't entirely reliable either, gave an even bigger estimate of 243,000. Oh, and let's not forget Horner's maximum estimate of 30,000. Casualty figures are always murky at the best of times. For World War II, I've seen anything ranging from 40 million to 85 million, and in the immediate aftermath, it will always be highly off the mark, because people simply can't get an accurate number. Yet, another attempt came in 1992, when a US Census Bureau employee, Beth Osborne Dapont, decided to do her own estimate. She arrived at about 158,000. This included not only the Gulf War itself, but also the anti-Saddam rebellions which followed, and the deaths caused by the effects of the bombing campaign. These figures were used as a basis by journalists such as Alex Thompson and Robert Fisk in their books. Though Thompson gave Desert Storm as killing 53,000 people, whereas Osborne de Pont gave 40,000, and Fisk gives the overall total of 157,000. Osborne de Pont's figures got a lot of publicity, mostly because the Bureau fired her for not seeking permission to release them and accused her of lying. But how accurate are they? 
Well, she didn't have any access to classified military files, and so had to use educated guesses. She guessed that the war probably killed as many as 13,000 civilians, while Middle East Watch claimed that no more than 3,000 civilians died during the bombing. After she was fired, Osborne de Pont's bosses changed her figure to 5,000 civilian deaths. It was realised in 1992 that the number of Iraqi troops the coalition actually faced might have been wildly overestimated, which messed with the casualty estimates. By November 1990, the coalition believed that they were facing off against upwards of 400,000 Iraqi soldiers, though other estimates placed it at almost 500,000. However, a year later this number had changed, and it was announced by the House Armed Services Committee that the 700,000 coalition troops were actually only facing off against perhaps 183,000 Iraqis, as most Iraqi units were severely undermanned due to desertion. The committee also put the total number of Iraqi casualties down to 9,000 in the air campaign and 120,000 during the ground campaign, though they said that the vast majority of that number deserted rather than were killed, so the total number of casualties isn't that clear still. Heidenrich explains that the number of Iraqi troops guessed to be in the war zone was inflated on purpose, though it was really off the mark to begin with anyway, because it was militarily safer to assume that the enemy had more troops than the coalition believed, just in case they actually did. This should have been corrected post-war, but it wasn't. In the post-war period, the US only buried 577 Iraqi corpses. This doesn't, though, account for all the bodies buried by other nations, the Iraqis themselves, or those which were never found for whatever reason. It's also impossible to even try to work out from the statistics that we do know, such as those in T-55 tanks, for example. A T-55, which was used a lot by the Iraqis, has a crew of four. So, if we are to assume that every single T-55 crewman died in every tank destroyed, which is highly unlikely, then let's pick on the Battle of Kafji in late January and early February 1991. The Gulf War Air Power Survey said that 474 Iraqi tanks were destroyed by the coalition aircraft alone during the period of the battle, which would mean that over 1,896 Iraqis died in this battle alone. But the Gulf War Air Power Survey is wildly off the mark. The coalition themselves, in a rare moment of giving Iraqi losses, announced that only 11 tanks were destroyed in total, not necessarily all by aircraft, and they guessed that the Iraqis lost only 32 dead in total, and not all of them were tank crewmen. So it's really impossible to even begin working out any numbers. But there's another huge factor missing in all this. The Iraqi point of view. At Kafji, the Iraqis claim they actually lost 66 killed in action, as well as 112 armoured vehicles, though they made no distinction between an armoured car, an armoured personnel carrier, or a tank in this record. At any rate, the three-day battle involving thousands of men saw less than a hundred Iraqis killed. But here there is another problem. Well, two, actually. Firstly, there are very few Iraqi records available, and, second, there is no way to know if the numbers are accurate. But we can see from the Iraqi perspectives that we do have that the numbers were probably far less than imagined, mostly because of the ineffectiveness of the air campaign. Lots of Iraqi military eyewitness accounts seem to agree that very few people died during the bombing raids. According to one study largely based off of these accounts by the US House Armed Services Committee, Iraqi units suffered perhaps a 2.5% death toll from it. But even this could have been an exaggeration. After all, will you have a clear and rational memory of how many people were killed after almost 40 days of bombing? Me neither. And were they killed? Or... Did they desert? This number could also be more a reflection of smaller unit losses. Iraqi prisoners couldn't have any idea how many men their division had lost. But if their company lost 1% of its strength to bombs, then this could have been taken by the coalition for the Iraqi army as a whole. This means that while losing an average of 1% of a company might have meant 10 men, it could be increased to 10,000 per corps by mistake. There are other examples too. The coalition announced that they destroyed huge numbers of Iraqi vehicles on many bombing raids, even when, so it turns out, they actually sometimes didn't due to Iraqi deception methods. This means that casualty estimates will probably be skewed. 
In October 1990, the Iraqis moved 689 out-of-action armoured vehicles to Kuwait, especially in the Al-Wafra forest, to be used as decoys. The idea was that they would attract US attention instead of actual in-use tanks. Naturally, any which were destroyed would have seen no crew members killed. Also, Iraqi tank crews would set tyres on the backs of their vehicles on fire if under coalition air attack to make the impression that everything was destroyed and the jet would leave. Reportedly, pilots would fall for this numerous times. Even in some of the most infamous episodes of the war, such as the Highway of Death, there were actually far fewer casualties than you might think. The Highway of Death was the name given to two motorways from Kuwait to Iraq, on which the retreating Iraqis were caught by coalition aircraft leading to bombing run after bombing run against the convoy. Those who arrived after the attacks didn't report seeing carpets of bodies. In all, along the miles of vehicles, perhaps 800 to 1,000 people were killed. It wouldn't even be accurate to say that all were Iraqis, because at least some would have been Kuwaiti hostages, kidnapped as the Iraqis fled the occupied capital. It has been claimed that many vehicles were abandoned before the occupants were killed, which limited the death toll. The post-war period is another matter entirely, which I will cover in a future video. But, suffice to say, due to the effects of the war and the UN sanctions which followed, not to mention sustained military action against Iraq after 1991, it is massively imbalanced compared to the casualties of the Gulf War. Overall then, how many Iraqis did die in the Gulf War? Well, according to numerous authors, anywhere between 1,500 to 250,000 though probably not exceeding 100,000. We just don't have any solid numbers from the Iraqi side to know. Meanwhile, the coalition didn't really want to know, and didn't really have the ability to know. So we never will. <laughs>